today. I'm going to share all the tech gear I bring, why I bring it, and it must fit inside this backpack. One, two, three, oh. Hello. Hi. We are Kencho Quest. We travel to open our minds and our hearts. Let's friends around the world. As longtime travelers, our family is continuously working towards being minimalist. It's a work in progress and will probably continue forever. So that includes not only the tech gear, but our clothes or anything else that we bring with us. It just really simplifies our life and makes things a lot less stressful. To be minimalist, I'm not one to rush out and buy new gear. Instead, I have become a firm believer in what you have now is good enough. And only if and when, you, first of all, if you can afford to buy the new gear, and two, you really have a need for it should you ever buy new gear. And also, I'm looking to replace gear if I'm buying new gear, because remember, it has to fit inside my backpack. So I need a way to sell it or give it away. This method has saved me thousands of dollars over the year, but it doesn't mean I don't have a lot of gear. Let's see what's inside the bag. This first item here is the DJI Action 2. It is the replacement for a GoPro Hero 7 Black that we had, and uh, I'm not a big fan of GoPro because our Hero was nothing but troubles from the get-go. Whereas with DJI, we have a couple of DJI products and they work great. This is brand new on the market, and again, I've only bought this to replace the Hero 7 Black. What I really love about this is that, first of all, it is comes in modules here. This top part is waterproof and this is really small, so it's kind of inconspicuous. And what I like about it is that you can attach it to this lanyard here and you can hang it on your shirt and you can walk around and most people won't even know you're wearing it. So this is great if you're going in crowded places or you just want to be kind of inconspicuous. It works really well. And also what's amazing about this, wow, this magnets really work really well, is it is super duper steady. I mean, this practically eliminates the need for a gimbal. Now, a lot of new products such as the GoPro can also do this, but man, this thing really takes it to another level. And this thing packs a punch too, so I don't wanna to talk too much about the tech specs of this thing, but it can shoot 4K at 120 frames per second, and it is super smooth. So why would you need that? It is really great if you wanna do slow motion later in post. That 120 frames per second is really, really nice. But most of the time, I'm just using this at 24 frames per second. Now, why would you need this camera? It's really if you need to do some type of action sports or something that involves water, or if you need to put the camera in some really small places. So this is really nice. We're always in places where there is a lot of water, where there's a swimming pool, and, and our kids like to take it in the water, or we're always near a beach. So we need something that can get wet, and this is perfect for that. What's great about this one is this adds a front-facing camera, so this is perfect for vlogging, so you can hold it like this and vlog, or you can also put it on a stick. So you're going to need one of these too. This is actually a GoPro stick, but it works well right on here. And this is holding on by magnets, but also it has these little, these little, I don't know what you call these, these little handles here that hooks it in place. So it's really sturdy and steady. And again, this is a GoPro stick. And what's great about this one is you definitely want to have one of these is this one floats. Now at first I didn't think there was a really need for it, but it's great because when, like we're in the swimming pool in the ocean and if my son lets go of it, it's just going to turn this way and because of its orange, it's really easy to spot. This also comes with some other components too. So you could use this in the car. It comes with a stick, a sticky little thingy so you can stick it in a lot of places and that adhesive actually is reusable. So you can take it and stick it somewhere and then wash it and stick it again in another place. So that's really great. This product is kind of pricey though, at $500. You can get a separate component here, the bottom, like not with the front-facing camera, but more of a battery compartment here, and that'll save you at least 100 bucks. The next item is another DJI product. This one is the original Osmo Pocket. It has been replaced by what they now call the Pocket 2. This is a super duper camera because it has a gimbal built into it. So it is actually really fluid, and again, it's really tiny, and it works great. You can run with this, the only time when it doesn't work really well is if you're walking straight forward. Now, if you bent your knees, it might help a little bit, but that's the only time the gimbal doesn't work so well. But again, because this camera is really small, we can take it many places, and this thing is surprisingly durable. I mean, we've, we've let our kids handle it too, and it still works well. We've had this for about three years now, and this is a super duper camera that can also shoot 4K, and it can't do 120 frames per second at 4K, but it can do 60, which is still pretty good. 
We normally use the Osmo when we're out vlogging or we just wanna get some video of our kids. It's super small, I can just fit it in my purse. Now there is one more camera that I have and I am filming with it right now. It's a Sony A7R2. It is the oldest camera that we have and that's where I'm one of the firm believers again in keeping what you have and what you have is good enough. I would love to have the Sony A7S III, but there's no way I'm gonna replace my camera until it actually goes dead. I used to carry a separate remote control for the Sony camera, but now I don't need that because it can all be controlled through the phone. The Sony has a bunch of apps for their cameras, and the main ones that I use are for remote control to start and stop the camera. There is also ones to control your shutter speed and time-lapse, among others, but those are the main three that I use. I carry three lenses. The first one here is a 16 to 35 millimeter f4. This is a great all around lens because I can shoot indoors at wide angle and 35 millimeters is great to give you that actual real life effect as well. But most of the time I'm using this indoors so it's open, wide open at 16 to 24 and sometimes I use it at 35. If I wanna shoot 35 millimeter then I also have this fixed 35 millimeter Samyang lens. It's a f2.8. This thing is super, super clear and it's super cheap. I think it's like $300 on Amazon. So it works really well. The autofocus is not nearly as good as on an actual Sony product, but uh, for the price, you can't beat it. The third lens I have is a 55 millimeter F1.8 Sony Zeiss. Now that is the first lens I bought for my mirrorless Sony cameras. And it is a great lens because it is buttery smooth. The bouquet is fantastic and it works great and that's what I'm filming with right now and that's helping what's causing the blur in the background. The only reason why it's not even more blurry is because the camera is actually a little bit farther away from me than I'd like it to because this table is actually pretty big. I use the 55 millimeter mostly if I want to get close-up portraits of our kids and I want a really blurred out background and it also works well here inside if I also want to get a close view of something and I don't want a disturbing background behind me. All right, so that's it for the Sony. That is the main camera that I carry. Now, as far as components for it, with the audio, we are using Rode microphone. This is the Rode Wireless Go 2, and this thing is phenomenal. It comes with two different mics. In fact, that's what I'm using to record with right now. And the quality of these things are amazing. So you can clip this onto your shirt if you wanted to. You can connect it to an external microphone and hide it and put this in your pocket or you know hide it in your back and the noise quality is really good with this and the range because this is wireless your camera can be really far i've only tested it maybe 20 30 feet that's more than enough for us we're, we're never going to be farther than that from our camera i don't think but it's supposed to be able to go a lot farther than that and we've never lost a connection what i really like about these is that they record the audio internally as well so sometimes if we're recording with the two different mics is that the audio when one of them gets messed up or if something gets corrupted because you have internal storage in both of them, you can take the audio from the other one and replace it. And that has been a lifesaver on a few occasions now. So this is our main microphones that we use. And what's great about these is that they're compatible with pretty much everything. So with a little cable, we can connect it to the A7R. We can connect it to both DJI products as well. And I believe it'll work with almost any device that has that connection. We like to travel light, so we only carry with one light, and that is a light that is actually lighting my face right now besides the overhead lights that we have right here. It is an Aperture Amaran, and this thing is super duper awesome and amazingly powerful, blindingly bright. It is set to a really low setting right now, and it's the only light we carry again because it's really small, lightweight. It charges via USB, and it charges pretty quickly, so that is super nice to have. Yes, we'd like to have more lights, but when you're trying to travel light and make everything fit in the backpack, that is perfect. Now, what about storage? Now that the price of SSD storage is coming down, this, this is the only way to go, is to carry these two terabyte sand disks. And I really like the sand disks because they're just built really durable. They got some rubber all around the edges. So if you drop it, it's probably gonna survive. I've never dropped these, but I heard of people dropping them six feet and them surviving. So these are great. You don't need the newer ones with the super fast transfer speeds. The chances are you don't have a device that's gonna be able to handle the faster ones anyways. And uh, right now we have two and we'll probably be getting another one. And the reason why is because video takes up a lot of space. And especially when we're filming our kids, we don't like to delete things. So we're just storing them in here and we're also uploading them to the cloud whenever we can. But these things are great. They've replaced all of our spinning drives now, which have failed on us numerous times. And when you're traveling and you're taking, you know, video of your family, you don't want to lose those precious moments. So I highly recommend these. All right. What else is in my bag? 
I have some other miscellaneous accessories, such as these JBL wireless headphones or earphones. These are, you know, just like your Apple ones, but these are cheaper and I like these a lot. They work really well and they're really compact so I can just stick them in my bag. I also carry the charger for the Sony a7R 2 and I have three batteries because these batteries don't work so great and they're older, but hey, like I said, I'm gonna keep using this thing until the Sony dies. I also carry this one packing cube here that holds all of my miscellaneous cables. Unfortunately, the devices use different types of connections. You know, USB-C is taking over, but still a lot of them use different connections. So I need to always carry this dongle here that's gonna allow me to connect the older USB dongles here to different types of devices. So, and I got lots of cables in here. The last item I have, most people aren't gonna need this, but I did purchase this over a year ago now. This is the Ronin S2, and it is an amazing gimbal. Now, I probably wouldn't have purchased this, but it was in the middle of COVID and we were in lockdown and I had nowhere to go. I didn't think we were gonna be traveling anytime soon. So I purchased this and I haven't used it a lot yet but it is great. It is, has some carbon fiber build to it, which makes it really, not really lightweight, but it makes it lighter to carry. And it's just really strong and has a really nice grip to it. And it works really well. I hope to use this a lot more. Um, if you have, like I said, you know, the Osmo Pocket, or if you are using the, the DJI Action, you're probably not going to need this unless you are also going to be carrying a DSLR and you want to get some buttery smooth footage as well. But many times, if your camera has in-body stabilization or a combination of that with your lens having some stabilization, you can get some smooth movement as well. So hopefully you'll see more usage of this. Otherwise, I will not carry it anymore. Now you might be wondering, well, what about a drone? Well, if you wanna watch this video up here, I'll, we explain why we don't carry a drone anymore. We used to, we love the idea of a drone. However, most places that you're gonna to go to, it's probably not legal for you to fly it. Even though you may see other people flying it, you better make sure and check the local laws and regulations that it is safe, first of all, and that it's legal. So unless you have a specific use for a drone, you know you're gonna use it, you know it's safe and legal to do, I would not bring a drone. And the last item I carry in my backpack is a 13 inch MacBook Pro. I used to carry a 15 inch when those were around and <laughs> those things were super heavy. The reason why I take the 13 inch is because of the weight and the size. So this is great. And this is also an older laptop. It's now five years old and I'm not looking to replace this anytime soon, even though Final Cut Pro is running really slow these days. So even though there's newer, faster models out there, especially for doing video editing, I can't get myself to replace it because this thing still works, even though it's a little slow now. I also use this for my work and I plan on keeping this until it dies or if I can find a good enough excuse to give it to my son to use. Now the backpack itself, this is a boundary errant. I've had this for about three years now. And the main reason why I like this backpack is because of its narrow profile. This is super important because especially if you're in crowded places, if you have a thick backpack, you're gonna be bumping into a lot of people and nobody likes that. And it just makes you look really bad. And my wife finally got tired of me bumping into her. So she made me replace it. There is no perfect bag. And this one definitely has its faults for instance. This water bottle pocket here is almost completely useless. Whenever this thing is full, you can't put anything into it. Look, as you can see right here now, this is, even though it has a little stretch to it, you can barely put anything into this. And when my backpack is full, nothing will fit in there. On the back here, I used to carry my passport, which fits perfectly in this little pocket here now, but my wife now carries all of our passports. So in here, I keep a spare mask. And on the side pocket here, I only keep two things, well, three. I keep some Fisherman's Friend cough drops, original. I keep my Fisher Space bullet pen. This thing is super awesome, really light, really compact. So this also fits nice in my pocket on the airplane when I need to fill out forms. And one other thing I carry in here, chopsticks. <laughs> this is a little crazy, but I do carry a pair of titanium chopsticks in here. And the reason why is because you never know when you're gonna need some utensils and you won't have them. This is really common in a lot of places if you're eating out on the side of the road in Asia or something like that. Or if the utensils look really dirty, you can just pull out some chopsticks. So really good to have. Well, let's pack this up and show you how everything fits.
found that helpful. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up and uh, please let us know in the comments below what type of travel gear you carry in your bag. And make sure you check out our ever-growing list of videos that help with the travelers just like you.